are. And hey guys, this is Martin Perdomo, the Elite Strategist. You're listening to Latinos in Real Estate Investing Podcast. And today I have a special guest, Rosalind Ortega. She has an online education and seminar platform designed to bring wealth building education to urban areas, which I absolutely love. Uh, Rosalind, like I, I was sharing with you earlier, off the record, you know, I come, we both come from the same place. So we yes. were both born and raised in Washington Heights, New York City, right? And I was just in Washington Heights this weekend, this past Thursday, last week, sorry, visiting my mom. And um, there's certainly some things that I missed about our urban area where we grew up, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, with the focus the focus the day, and her it's still home, yes. It is, it is. Like, seriously, you know, I live in the middle of nowhere now. And I have chickens. My wife has six chickens and Aww. there's bears and deers and all kinds of stuff, right? And wildlife. And, um, you know, I'm a New York City kid and I'm in this, uh, in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yet I still miss my noise and my craziness because that's, you know, how I grew yes. up. And, right, I went back and I was like, man, I miss this stuff, you know. Yeah. Food in small doses, though. Small doses. Yeah, small doses. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> agree. And I'll, I'll absolutely accept that. Anyways, her focus is on real estate investing and entrepreneurship. Rosalind, welcome, bienvenida, and Thank um, you. I'm really proud of the work that you're doing, educating and bringing people on, hence why I wanted to bring you on this uh, on this podcast so we could talk a little bit about what you're doing. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, who's Rosalind, yes. and how did you evolve into this real estate investor slash educator? Yes, so my name is Rosalind, like you said. I was actually raised in the Bronx, but I spent okay. most of my childhood in Washington Heights because my entire family lived there. Mm -hmm. So I consider that home as well. Um, mm -hmm. I, let's see, where do I start? Um, you know, city kid, lived, you know, below kind of lower income families, you know, as usual, as we all have been at some point. Um, always a self learner. So I always understood the power of learning things on my own outside of school. Um, I found school to be really boring for me, especially in high school. So I didn't feel like I was learning things that I would need in adult life. So as soon as I got out of high school, I decided that I didn't want to, well, that I couldn't afford going to college because I didn't want to spend four years getting into debt, you know, student loans, all that good stuff to, wait, to wait to get a, a job right in my mind I'm like I'm in New York City I'm in the biggest city in the world you know I just need to learn a skill so that I can get a full-time job help my family and then get on with life right so I did a 10-month program at a business school a hospitality program um, in the city you know like a trade school went there for 10 months got a, a diploma I don't even know if it's really worth anything what but they call it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah what they call it right um, but the most important thing was that I spent 10 months learning the hotel business specifically right I didn't have to take liberal arts and all this other crap not crap I shouldn't say that but all these other classes that were probably not going to serve me <laughs> any uh -huh. um, but I learned hotel management specifically so for 10 months you know I studied how to manage the restaurant and the hotel how to manage reservations the sales department uh, housekeeping and all these other areas so I was able to get a job in a hotel right after that program so that was mm -hmm. you know it, it equated to something valuable I uh, right. got a job in hospitality um, started at the very bottom as an operator phone operator uh, grew from that uh, reservations position sales position and then eventually ended in a corporate role in revenue management which is all around numbers right like pricing the rooms forecasting budgeting because numbers was always my strength. So I, I kind of knew what, that I wanted to be in that area. So while okay. keeping the job, I was able to learn other things, right? I wanted to learn about stocks. I wanted to learn about real estate. The stock portion of it was because I was exposed to that when speaking to bosses, like, you know, other cultures that mm -hmm. talk about investing, talk about portfolios. And in my mind, I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm from the Bronx. I don't know what portfolio means. Teach me. Like, what does mm -hmm. that mean? How do you do it? Um, so that sparked an interest. The same with real estate. You know, I was meeting um, professionals at a corporate level that owned rental properties, that owned homes in other states. So that always sparked my interest. So I kind of took it from there and, you know, started learning some things and decided that, you know, I needed to get in as well. Perfect. So what's the, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to go right into it. I'm okay. going to, I'm going to go for it. What's the one thing that you do that you have found, right? So, and then I'm going to, I want you to tell me which, how you wind it up in real estate, but I want to yeah. go right into this question. Cause this is my, this is my favorite question. It's what's the one thing that you have, that you do 
that you found that's giving you the most success as an entrepreneur, as a business person, as a real estate investor? What's that one thing? Thinking outside the box, for sure. Doing okay. things out does, of the norm. How does one do that? Huh? How does one do that? What does that um, mean? How does a person do that? How does a person think outside the box? How do they get in that state to think in, outside the box? How in do that, you do that? In that mindset? Yes. All about mindset. I mean, with me, it happened because, A, I didn't want to work 40, 50 years of my life to be able to live okay as a retired adult. I saw mm -hmm. a lot of that around me, so I knew that that was not going to be an option. I did not have to. I do not want to wait till I'm 65 to enjoy life. Mm -hmm. um, so the other, so knowing what I didn't want was enough for me to say, ah, what do I got to do that. to get there? Right. So I don't want to be my parents. I don't want to be my grandparents. I don't want to sacrifice family time, vacation time, wealth, just because, you know, I'm going to follow the norm and do what people tell you, you got to do, which is go to school, get a job, go home at night, cook dinner, go to sleep, wake up, do the same thing the next day. So that alone drove me to just think, all right, what, what else can I do to not go there? So, so I want to make sure that, uh, that that's worth repeating, okay? Because it's worth taking a note. You absolutely knew one way or the other. You knew what you wanted and you knew what you didn't want, but you right. got clear on what you didn't want. You knew that you yes. weren't going to, basically, you knew you, wasn't, you didn't want to keep following the pattern that your ancestors had set for you. That's right. You wanted something different. You wanted to break that pattern, right? Absolutely. You know, I talk about generational curses when I, when I, when I, at my workshops and my event, Rosalind, and one of the things that I share with what people think is generational curse, right? So there's the, there is the Bible part of it and the spiritual part of it, which is business to me is spiritual. It's a spiritual game. It's serving, it's giving, and, and it's mm -hmm. energy. But, when we talk about generational curses, people think that it's just, and this is my opinion on generational curses. It's not this woo woo thing that God says, you're going to, your family's cursed. Now, although God did, if you believe in the Bible, whatever, you know, that God did say that to some families and, and, mm -hmm. and some people, I mean, some, some cultures within the Bible, right? Cause I right. studied the Bible, but there's another aspect to generational curse and that's the projections that our families and I reject this for you and I reject this for our listeners and for myself, but there's the projection that happens from generation to generation. I interviewed someone that said to me, um, people, he said to me something like people, the biggest pe biggest people's biggest challenge is they think they know something incorrectly. They think they know something, but it's incorrect they, got, they, they know the wrong or thing. Or they just don't right. know or something like that. They just don't know what they don't know, right? So let me give you an example of that, right? So I grew up, for instance, gave me my mom used to tell me, and, and I used to hear at home all of the time, you know, um, and I'm going to get political a little bit here. <laughs> okay. But be, this is what I, Go this is it. what I, this is how I learned about politics, right? This is, a, this is what I learned about politics. It was like, a, you know, the Republicans are for the rich and the Democrats are for the poor. Right. And, and, and rich people, I used to hear this. Are bad. Home, are bad. See, they're, they're bad. They I, have I learned the same here. thing. Yes. <laughs> right? Yeah. They have us living here. And that's so much bullshit. You know, it excuse is. me. Totally. Because it's, it's a condition. Where did they learn that? Someone right. told them that. Where did they, they learn that? Did they, did they, yeah, did they learn? Did they do their own due diligence? Did they do their own intelligent research and say, okay, based on the evidence that I found, this is what I find to be true. Yeah, this is what they told them. This is yep. what I was told, right? And I reject that for me. Right. Um, but this happens a lot of time, right? A lot of times. It's, it happens so, all the time. Yeah. Right. So, so si te dicen, if you're growing up, it's dicen a ti that you are that rich people are bad. And I reject that. Rich people are not bad, by the way. Rich people are good. Rich people without bad rich people, people are bad people. Be... That's what I say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Has nothing to do with their money. Bad. You got yes. bad, poor people and you got bad, rich people. <laughs> like, yes. 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 yes right. Yes. So they tell you these things and then unconsciously because your unconscious mind. Now you're growing up. And your unconscious mind tells you, I don't want to be bad. Right. Right. I don't want to be a bad person. So I'd rather be a good person and be poor. And I freaking totally reject this of for course. anyone listening. But this is what happens in the conditioning of the unconscious mind. Yes. And in my opinion, this is the, where the generational curses happen. And then we keep giving that to our kids. Right. 
Absolutely. And then our grandkids and their kids, and it just goes on, and we don't break it. We don't. We, we don't, don't stop. Break that. Right. Right. So, so one, of, one of the, you're doing. So one of the things I was gonna sorry say to follow that is, I always preach about what are the things you need to unlearn before you start yes. learning, right? Yes. So I yes. when I teach my courses, you know, I always open up with that. Okay. Yes, you might think that. Um, owning your first home and paying it off in 18 years versus 30 years is the best thing to do because that's what someone told you that is the right thing to do. But let's unlearn that for now, right? Let's think about home buying as an investment. How do you approach buying your first home as an investment as opposed to something that you're going to keep for 30 years and you're going to send an extra payment every month and you're going to work two jobs to pay for 18 years and you're not going to touch the equity because that's your retirement house versus thinking, how am I going to go in, buy a place where I can live, but use that as an investment structure so that I can help my family get wealthy, right? Mm. So again, unlearn to learn. It's kind of my, my thing. So it, I it, absolutely right with that. love that. Guys, take note of what Rosaline is saying here. That's wisdom. <laughs> that, is, that, is, that is powerful. That's good stuff, Ro uh, Rosa. I try. Ros can I call you Rose? Is it okay? <laughs> yes, okay, yes. Rose? Rose is fine. Okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> Um, that's really powerful stuff, Rose. I mean, because it's unlearning the things that we think are right, which right. don't serve us right. So tell me, why real estate? I know you shared a story with me about your grandma and stuff like that. Do you mind sharing that story with your sure. with, with my listeners? Why real estate? Why did you choose? So you learned about, you know, and again, you and I come from similar places, similar backgrounds. So this stuff is not taught to us. Right. So we had to go out and seek it. We had to seek, you know, and ask and educate yes. ourselves. So how did you wind up with real estate? So, well, as a child, you know, I lived in multiple apartments in the Bronx because we mm -hmm. either, you know, the building was always being sold or our apartment was being re redone and we were getting kind of moved around, relocated, that stuff. So I always understood that landlords were in it to make money, right? So I knew that piece of it. At the same time, my grandma worked in the U.S. for 20 years in factories and all these jobs, right? And in her 40s, she was able to build a house in DR, in Dominican Republic. Um, she bought a big plot of land in the capital, built a house on it. Um, I remember it as a first level house, like all bricks, you know, one level, mm -hmm. couple of rooms. I would go there every summer because my parents would send me there every summer. We didn't have money for summer camp. Um, and every summer that I went throughout my teenage years, she was always developing it. Right. So one summer I went, there was a second level on it now. So now it's mm -hmm. like, she has tenants on top. Another summer I went, she built rooms in the back of the house. So now she had like six other tenants in the back, mm -hmm. you know, five years later, she built on top of those units. So now she had like a whole little community in her forties still probably like early fifties by that point, mm -hmm. but she was purely living off of rental income. Um, nice. so to me, that was fascinating. I'm like, oh, my grandma's in her early fifties. She doesn't ever have to work again. Um, and she's getting income from her tenants and she's living well, you know, she well, well compared to what we were living here in the U S right. When my mm -hmm. parents had to work all day and struggle, she was in DR home all day, collecting rent, you know, opening small businesses and, and helping her community. So that, that already opened my eyes to, to believe that you know, real estate was definitely the way to go. Fantastic. So then what happened in your mind? What happened to you as you got older? You know, how, how did that translate into you actually deciding, hey, I'm going to buy real estate? What happened there in your unconscious mind and in your mindset? Um, well, as an adult, I lived, the, my last home that I lived in was in Washington Heights, right, in a rental. Mm -hmm. And of course, you know that Washington Heights has been gentrified for the last mm -hmm. decade or so. So I went from paying, you know, I don't know, 900 bucks in, a, in an apartment to like 1500 bucks in a one bedroom apartment with a, a three year old daughter, then she's 12 now. But, um, you know, at that point, I realized that throwing all this money away in rent was just not the way to go. So just like all of us, you know, we're like, okay, I want to buy something, but I can't really afford to buy in New York. I can't afford to buy in the Bronx or Brooklyn or, or Manhattan. So I started venturing out, you know, I started venturing mm -hmm. out into Jersey. I started, I, I would always come to Jersey, like shopping and stuff. So I was familiar with the areas. Um, and then I just one day decided that, you know, I needed to get out of the city that I was not ever going to be able to buy or afford something in the city where I would have space, you know, a parking spot, a laundry room, 
you know, mm-hmm. a good school for my kid. Um, so all of those things motivated to just get up and go and look outside my area. Perfect. Uh, I want to, I want to, I want to, I want to switch gears a little bit. We were talking about earlier, we were talking about, you were sharing a story with your, about your dad, right? Mm-hmm. Which I have a similar story with my mom and your dad retiring soon. Mm-hmm. If you don't mind, are you okay sharing that yeah, story? Of course. Yeah. So, so if you don't mind sharing that story, that conversation you had with you, with your, with your old man there about, about, um, you know, him wanting to buy a house and, and this thing, because, and, and, I, and I ask you to share that story because a lot of people in the Latino community, right? A lot of people, period, okay? Not even the Latino community, a lot of people, see, we know that most millionaires, 90% of millionaires are made through real estate or own a substantial amount of real estate. We right. know that, right? Intuitively, we hear it, we know it, we see it, we it's see the fact, wealthy people yeah. around us. They own real estate. Right. So intuitively, we don't have an education about it, but we're like, how do I get in this game? And we just want to get in right. without yeah. really entendiendo bien, right? Like really understanding, because I made that mistake. And I'm saying because I made that mistake. So mm-hmm. would you share that, that, that discussion, that, that call you had with your dad and your thoughts on it? Yeah. So I'll share a little bit about it. So yeah, so he's three, way, three years away from retiring, retiring from his mm-hmm. job. Um, and he's, you know, he wants to put his money somewhere. He's like, I, I can't leave my money in the bank. I want to buy real estate. Of course, he has the same mentality, which is can't buy in New York because he can't afford it. It's too overpriced. Doesn't want to buy in Jersey because he feel like, oh, a lot of houses here are just older homes, right? He doesn't want to deal with older houses, et cetera. Mm-hmm. So a friend of his kind of convinced him to invest in Florida. So he calls me out of the blue and says, I want to buy in a new community in Orlando that's going up um, and the house is ready. It's almost ready. It's a brand new house. They sent me a video. It's beautiful. There's spacious, four bedrooms, got nice floors, nice kitchen. It's brand new. I don't have to do anything. It's brand new, brand new, brand new. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, okay, here we go. Um, you know, so I'm like, but you're three years away from retirement and it's Florida. Like you can always find a new community somewhere in Florida, you know? buy wait till you are ready to go down there no Mm -hmm. well i'll just find a tenant i'll rent it to a tenant i'm like okay let's look at the numbers right let's see Mm -hmm. what is rent going for in that area Mm -hmm. um how are long our properties staying vacant in those areas what is the vacancy rate Mm -hmm. you know because i know these things so i can kind of coach them through what are some of the things you got to look at before you decide Mm -hmm. that you want to buy out of state where you can't get to into, a, you know, you have to jump on a plane to get there. You can't just drive mm-hmm. there um, quickly anyway. And, uh, you know, once I started having that conversation, he started kind of getting nervous and saying, oh, I didn't think about those things. Um, I said, you know, what if the tenant stops paying rent? Well, first, what if you can't rent it? Because right now in Florida, as all other states, but more so in Florida, it, Orlando's very tourist driven it's a tourist driven city so everyone it's a tourist economy so everyone works either for the airlines the car rentals the hotels the cruise airlines the you know parks Mm -hmm. disney right now all Mm -hmm. that stuff is shut down a lot of people have been give me yeah i'm sure you got the numbers like 20 something thousand thousand twenty eight thousand layoffs disney right exactly so Mm -hmm. again i'm like think about those things who is going to rent that house to pay 15 or 1800 dollars a month when the entire economy of that state and that city is trash right now, right? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but you know, it's, it's a nice community. Yeah, I understand it's a nice community. Who are you gonna find to rent a home to? Can you find a double income household that makes 90 grand a year to pay that rent? Mm-hmm. So after having these conversations, he finally was like, oh yeah, I didn't think about that. You know, his goal was set on, it's brand new, it's brand new, it's brand new. I'll be there in three years, but it, let's, let's talk about what happens between now yes. and three years, yes. right? Yes, yes. I'm so glad that you shared that because that happens a lot to a lot of us, right? We want to buy real estate. We want to get into real estate, but we don't know the numbers like you just did. What's the vacancy rate? What if they are, what if this place is vacant for three months? How long is it going to take me? What's Right. You know, what's the collection rate in the area? What's the employment like in the area? Right. And 
you know, this is, by the way, this guy's, the reason Rose and I are sharing this with you is because we've both been there. Right. Like we both, we've both done that. Like been there, done that. I, I did that mistake. I made that mistake already. Yeah. Right. I made that mistake with my first investment. When bought, I did great. I was the mortgage guy. I made 15 grand on the sale. Yeah. I did really good. Nice. And now looking back right now that I know how to run the numbers, I did really, really good, but I was underwater a hundred thousand dollars within a year and a half. Same right? here. Um, because, <clears throat> yep. So, so it's just get yourself a little bit of an education, get yourself learn, you know, sign, sign up for, 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 um, Rose's courses. Rose has got some really good courses on, on, on this stuff. The yeah. leases, I know I've seen your stuff, leases, how to write a lease and all that stuff. My stuff is a little bit different than what you're doing, but get yourself an education, get yourself learn these things first, get yourself a foundation of what to look for right. and how to set yourself up for success before actually going out there because we want you to succeed, man. I want people to succeed. Yeah. I, I, want, I want people to win. I, you know, I want to see other people winning. Yeah. Right. And it pains me because I've been through that pain and so have you. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So before, uh, before I even invested in Jersey, you know, 12 years ago, in my early 20s, I actually bought a property in Miramar, Florida, which again, same concept. I have friends that moved to Florida. They were like, oh, I, my community is brand new. Buy a townhome, buy a townhome. I was able to get a mortgage. I bought a townhome down there. I got tenants for it. Guess what? I ended up foreclosing on that first property uh, because mm. I was out of state. I wasn't there. Tenants couldn't pay the rent. They couldn't stay. I couldn't pay both bills, right? The mortgage there and, and my rent here. So guess what happened? You know, and again, 08 hit. So it was like, I was on the water, hundred grand. So the same situation, you know, and again, it's that mentality that we all want to get in, but we don't see the big picture. So it's very, very there's, a, there's a price to entry, right? There's a bear, there's a, what did, what did, um, I interviewed a guy, America's money mentor. Um, he had an HGTV and he said to me, there is a price to, there's a price to entry to this business, right? To do it right. To any business, right? To, mm -hmm. to even to surround yourself with people that are going to level you up. Right. There's a bear, there's a price to entry, right? So where are those people that are going to level you up? Where is the Rose? Where is Rose hanging out? Where <laughs> am I hanging out? Yeah. Where are the, where are these people that can, that know this, some of this information and I, I don't mean that, I mean that in, in the most humblest way. Like where are people like you and I that have this information? Right. You know, where are we hanging out? Well, you know, we're, we're at events. We're, we're with yes. others. We're looking to grow. We're looking to learn. I'm, you know, I'm attending your events. People, people like me are attending my events. People right. like me are, 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 are in different places. And that's where, where it happens. That's where, that's one of the places, but there's a price. There's a price to entry to that. There's a time involved. Right. There's a commitment right. to your education. There's a time to, I'm going to pay these tickets. I'm going to buy this ticket. Right. I'm going to fly it there. I'm, I'm going to spend it myself. Yes. I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to buy your course, right? I'm going to yes. go home every night and look at this thing. I'm going to listen to what Rose is telling me to do. She said, this is step one. I'm going to go take action on step one. So there's a price to entry guys. Right. There's a price to entry to this thing where, where you have to invest in yourself to take yourself to the, to the level that you want to get to. Right. And, and, we, and you and I met an, at an event, right? That's how we That's connected. absolutely right. That's absolutely yeah. right. We were both, just so the audience knows, Rose and I were, were speakers at an event. We both were, were invited to speak at an event at a round table in Jersey. And that's how we met. Right. And, and that's, that's, there is perfect example. This is how Rose and I met. So there, there it is. You want to know where, where the achievers are, right? Look, I, I'm a big Tony Robbins guy. And, and Tony, awesome. Tony Robbins says, you know, when you go to his events, he's like, listen, it takes, it takes an overachiever, a maniac, or maniacal type, maniac mindset craziness to want to improve, to show up to these events, to come here. If you've been, if anyone's been to Tony, this yeah. is not to give oh, him yeah. a plug. I absolutely respect and love Tony because I've learned so much from him. Um, but you show up to his events and the worst, the last thing you want to do is ask, what time is it over? Right. Because if you, it's Tony time and Tony times is whenever Tony's done, right? right. And it takes a crazy person to, to, to fly 3000 miles away where you don't know anyone to be with 10,000 people right. to spend five days or three or four days for 10, 12 hours. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> but is that energy though? The energy keeps it going. Energy. 
Right. Yeah, the people. You don't want to leave. <laughs> yeah, the people, the network. You know, I get to meet people like you. I get to meet other people. That's where the overachievers are. And it takes a certain mindset. It takes right. a certain personality to be like, yeah, I'm going to invest in myself. I'm going to take away from my business, from my family, from from everything to go and grow and be better. That's right. right? That's right. That's the price of entry, guys. And you know what, too? <laughs> like, at, at some point, you have to make that decision. Like, okay, mm -hmm. is a $200 event gonna really break me when i'm spending 200 dollars on on my next birthday dinner you know what i mean mm -hmm. like what's yes. gonna get you further is it gonna be that two thousand dollar vacation with because the kids want to go to the beach mm -hmm. or is it gonna mm -hmm. be you saying we're gonna go to a local beach and spend only five hundred dollars and take the rest of the money and spend it on my education as a parent yes. so that i can elevate yes. the entire family you know i got we i got legally married with my partner Mm -hmm. December of 19 and we both decided thank you honey. Uh, we both decided that we weren't going to do a big wedding and we weren't going to go on a honeymoon because our plans are so set in stone with all right we got to get the next property and we got to start my business and we're going to keep our money so that when the next opportunity comes that's the priority and you know it's it, a lot of people were like oh you're crazy for doing that you know it's only we're both like look we're in our 40s you know what do we have to prove to anyone we're not going to spend money in an irresponsible way you know when we have kids and we have goals that we need to get to so i think once you get to the mindset of let me stop planning these baby showers and birthdays and kinkses and mm -hmm. vacations that i can't afford and let me put that money into something that's going to help my family create wealth and that's that's everything i applaud you for that <laughs> i totally applaud you for that because Literally, my wife and I have that conversation almost weekly. Literally, Great. almost Good. weekly, right? Because it's conditioning. It's a conditioning and reconditioning. And, and hey, what am I doing? Literally had the conversation this morning with, literally, as I was brushing my teeth, my wife and I, yeah. what are we doing now? What are, what is the moves that we're making right now, babe? What are the that's moves right. we're making right now that's going to make us better in a year? That's, that's going right. to make us freer in five. That's going to create generational wealth for our grandchildren, of which we don't even know yet. Right. For my great grandchildren. Exactly. What's our move? What are we doing now? See, it's a different conversation. That's right. Then the nice, I'm going to go get a nice car. Listen, I want a Maserati and I'm going to get it soon. Hopefully next year. <laughs> You're going right? to get it. Yes. I like nice things and I know you like nice of things course. too. Of right? course. Of course. But it's about understanding the difference with what is an asset and what is a liability. That's right. And just to put it simple, guys, assets put money, and I know this is an oversimplified version of what an asset is and what a liability is, but an asset puts money in your pocket yes. and a liability yes. takes money out, out of, of your, your pocket. pocket. So it takes money out of your household. So a new car, yep. guys, I know you're not going to like this, but I'm going to give it to you. <laughs> a, a new liability. car is a liability. That's right. That's right. <laughs> car payment is a liability. You have to go work to make that car payment. An investment property that produces net cash flow is an asset. That's right. That net cash flow pays for the car. That's right. Right? See, yes. I don't have to go work for it. So once you get clarity around that, it's like, where did they teach us that? Demon. Not in school. Is that in school? <laughs> not at home and not in school. Did our sure. parents know that information? I mean, they didn't know either. So I, we can't really blame them. Yeah. Think. Yeah, they, they didn't know what they didn't know. Okay, so I have another question for you. Um, I have a bunch of questions for you, but I guess okay. my next question for you is, why urban, right? Why is your heart, your heart in educating urban communities? Um, again, because that's where I come from, and I feel like we get the, I don't want to say the bad word, but the shitty end of the stick, right? Mm -hmm. We're the ones that always get stuck with poverty, lack of education, no programs for our kids, violence, crime, big families, all that good stuff, all that bad stuff. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I'm like, all right, I want to build a business where I can do what I love, which is learning and sell and sell education, right? The right mm -hmm. education, not just education that you're going to go pay for four years and, and come out of there with a piece of paper that might still not might get you a job. So I want to be able to use what I know to build that business model, but to target my community. So I figure that, you know, first using the name urban is dear to my heart because it identifies that as my 
who you niche, are. My niche market, right? Exactly. And of course, I welcome everyone. It doesn't mean that you only need to be in that market to mm -hmm. access the information, but it's, you know, it's a targeted business, really. Um, mm -hmm. And I just feel like, you know, I, a lot of adults, a lot of adults, I talk to them every day. They're teachers, they're nurses, they're bus drivers, train conductors, um, and they still don't have any basic financial education. Mm -hmm. they, they think that, you know, this pension in 20 years and this paycheck they get every two weeks is enough. And it, when it really isn't, you know, we, we just work so hard to do, we have to work twice as hard to get, you know, the yeah. basics pretty much. And yeah. I just feel like I had to do something to kind of treat it both, treat my aspirations as a business owner and my aspirations as someone that wants to give back, give back and teach the community. Rose, what is it that you find that as you teach people, right, you know, within your community and your tribe, what is it that you find is the, the biggest misconception, the biggest limiting belief that people have about investing um, in real estate or the most common limiting belief or misconception or just wrong information? What is the common one? Um, right. That they need 20% to buy their first home, right? And so it's like, you, mm -hmm. so it's like they heard it from someone, they heard it from someone else. So they repeat it and they're like, well, if houses in the Bronx are 500,000, I'm going to need 100,000 just to buy my first house. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, where are you getting this number from? You know? Mm -hmm. um, and I hear it all the time. I hear it from people that take my courses that, you know, DM me all the time. And it's like, no, you learn about all the different loan products out there that you can qualify for as a first time investor or first time home buyer. And then you take it from there. Um, mm -hmm. The next thing I hear is, you know, I don't want to pay the 3.5% as a, as a FHA uh, mortgage or whatever holder, because that's PMI and I don't want to pay that extra insurance. So I'm just going to wait another four years, pay rent for four years while mm -hmm. I save the 20%, which in mm -hmm. mo most cases don't even, doesn't even happen. Doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Because the you're gonna, right. Because your discipline is not there. So if you have yeah. 20 grand in the bank and your daughter's turning 16 next month, you're going to think about, I have $20,000 in the bank and I want to throw my daughter a quinceanera. La fiesta. El you party. Know? The party. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. entonces, it's, it's like, okay, be realistic, learn, get the information, and then be realistic with your discipline. Um, if you yeah. don't have it, you don't have it. You know, we, we're not always as disciplined as we should be, right? Got it. So, what advice would you give right now to a brand newbie, right? Brand newbie. Um, maybe they are, they're listening to us for the first time and they're from the Bronx or they're from mm -hmm. Chicago in the hood or they're from LA, right? Mm -hmm. Wherever, because this show gets listened to worldwide or maybe they're from France, right? We have listeners in France. Yes. What advice would you give someone, a brand spanking newbie person that wants to get in this game, in this current economic situation, What's the first thing you tell them, the second thing you tell them, and the third step you tell them to take? Lay out all your finances in front of you. So understand your numbers. Number one. Number understand one. Your numbers. Understand your numbers. Finances. Okay, perfect. Finances. Okay, what's you got to know your credit score, how much you make, how much you spend, where can you trim your expenses, everything. You got to know. People say, I don't like numbers, but you like money, right? So if you I like I love numbers money, and numbers love me. <laughs> right. <laughs> So that's one thing, uh, lay out the numbers, uh -huh. understand them. Number two is understand the steps that you'll need to acquire financing, because you're going to need financing to get into an investment. Mm -hmm. So whether okay. that's, okay, what type of loans are out there? What can I qualify for? What my credit score is looking like? All that good stuff. And then number three is, are you- So what was number two? Number one is know your numbers. Number two is what? Um, type of loans out there? Understand the process, yes, and financing, yes. Understand financing, okay, got it. So know your numbers and under, number two, understand financing. Okay, sorry, number three. Number three, be flexible and write down a timeline. So be flexible, I mean by that is, if you're telling yourself, I only wanna buy a property in the Bronx or in Yonkers, then you're not being flexible, right? Because mm -hmm. you might not be able to afford those areas. 
if you're saying I want a house that has a brand new kitchen and a brand new bathroom and two apartments in it, you mm -hmm. might not be able to afford that. So you have to be flexible. You have to think outside the box and you have to think outside of your area as well. So when I say be flexible is an all around situation. Don't right. get, don't get so tunnel vision into one type of investment that you let another one slide by because you're just so focused on that one thing. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, um, if I may, I want to dig into number two a little bit. Um, understand the loans, right? What, where was, where would someone know, go to learn to understand the loans, right? Because I think someone like you teaches that stuff, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So that, does that kind of fall into the education aspect of it? Like understand what loans, educate yourself and understanding loans and how they work and how the banks underwrite the numbers so that right. you can in turn make yourself bankable, right? Exactly. Make yourself pretty for the bank. Right. Is that what you mean by that? I, yes. I don't know. I'm giving you yeah, meaning, no. but I want to make sure that I, Yes, that, exactly. That like a lot of people, you know, there's people that think that just because they make a hundred grand a year, that that alone will qualify them for a mortgage when they don't understand mm -hmm. that you're, they're going to look at the big picture. How much do you make? How much do you owe? What your credit is looking like? Um, and you have to literally put a case forward, right? You have to present yourself as a, a responsible paying adult before any bank looks at you as a potential client before they give you that check, that mortgage. That's 100%, 100%. And, and it's important. I'm gonna give a tip there, um, if, you don't, if you don't mind, right on, on, on there, is build a relationship, find a community bank and start building yes. relationships with small community banks because small community banks are relation, relational driven, relationship driven. And I'll share this quick story. I just closed on an 11 unit on Friday. I literally, Congrats. before this, before we recorded, thank you. Before we recorded this, my banker, right, which is there a small community bank local mm -hmm. to the community where the asset is. But my bank, my title company on Friday asked me at the closing, Martin, I need the, I need the homeowners. It was one of the, the homeowners insurance, the, okay. the business insurance, because it's a commercial property, the business insurance. And I said, you know what? I got it. I paid it. But the agent never sent me the deck page, mm. the declaration page. I said, just send it to Tony. Don't worry, I'll get it. Just, you know, just disperse money. Don't worry, I'll send it to Tony. Now I have over 12 loans with this bank, right? Okay. I have a strong relationship with this bank. And um, so my banker, called the VP of, of the mortgage department calls me, my banker this morning. He's like, hey Martin, I got everything, but I'm missing the insurance. I said, yep, I already emailed on Friday. You'll have it in a few minutes, in a few moments here. I emailed my insurance guy to send it to me. And he was like, no worries, no sweat. We have a really strong relationship. We know if you said you did it, you did it and you'll get it to us. My point with that story is, and I did, but before, that's what kind of um, straggled my time a little bit. I was dealing with that okay. when we were about to start on this episode. Uh, my point of the story is that you small community banks if you go to a big conglomerate mm. like the big ones jp or wells or one of those there's not that relationship if you don't have it you're not closing That's there right. is no i take your word on integrity we've done a lot of business we know how you're we know how you're doing there's no flexibility there right. when you have when you're dealing with a small community bank in your community and you start to build that relationship it becomes a partnership yeah and, and and that's what i have with my bank it's we're partners right last week i'll share this story with you rose um, I went, my, my banker calls me on Wednesday and he's like, Martin, your operating agreement, because we bought this in an LLC, your operating agreement, it's really confusing to us. Mm. And we, I want to come to my office, come to the bank, and we're going to get the head of the credit department for the whole bank on the phone with you. I said, okay. sure. And I tell you, I went into this meeting, Rose, right? So, you know, I, I like to think of myself as pretty, pretty articulate pretty smart when it comes to my investing stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I went into this meeting and I got to tell you, I was really, really frustrated because here is my, here is the head of the credit department. He is picking my freaking operating agreement apart. apart. He's right. tearing it apart. He's like, well, you said this here, you said that here. And I'm like, no, that's not what I, that's not the way this thing is structured. This thing is structured like this. And, and just, I was using the wrong language just to, just to, I'm making a point here mm -hmm. that even though 
I, I know this stuff and I invest. I don't know everything. And we yeah, need a team. Exactly. I was using the wrong language. You know, this guy's looked at thousands of these and I'm like, Mark. And then finally, se me prendió el bombillo, like my, a light went off. And I was like, you know what? Why don't we just do this? Why don't we just call my attorney that prepared the document? Oh, there you go. And exactly. Come on three way, done, I step out. And I did that and the best thing I did, um, my attorney and him, they, they duked it out, they figured it out. And just like that in five minutes, it took me an uh, hour. Five yeah. minutes, they figured it out. My point is that this business, you know, it's relational, it's relational. Absolutely, and, yes. Um, you need a team, right? Like you were talking about your dad, you're gonna go with it. Yes. You need to have people around you that you can't do this stuff by yourself. Right, exactly. Right? It, you can't, you you can't feel like you know it all just because you've heard it from a neighbor, you know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> just because Thank your neighbor you. told you or your coworkers like, yeah, I did it like this. It's like this and like this and like that. I'm like, it doesn't work like that. What are you talking about? Yeah, but yeah, yeah. It, do, it does not it, it really doesn't and, and um, you know, we, we need a team. We need to get ourselves around smarter people than us. Yes. And look, everyone has us. Everyone has a, everyone has a gift from God. Everyone. Maybe you're really good with people. Maybe you're really good with numbers. Maybe your your thing is talking to realtors. Maybe just start getting a showing up, man. Just right. start showing up to start showing up to real estate investors meetups, right? Yes. Start showing up to to um, Rose's event. Uh, yes. Follow her on on Instagram. Just just start. Like really, literally, like just start putting yourself in the energy around investors and you will see what happens when you show up. How Absolutely. Just, you just start escalating and growing. If you seek, ye shall find. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. You're not going to find if you're on um, Netflix all day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Any rose, any parting words of wisdom um, before we let you go? You know what? I'm not going to part with you yet. There's one more question I have okay. for you. One more question I have for you. What are your thoughts on the current economic situation and the current, I call it a bubble. I yes. know from experience that this is a bubble. This is, I don't care what anyone tells me. This I is agree. Absolute, Absolutely. This is, not, this is not normal. To get three this days is not normal. Overbidding. So please guys, if you're brand new in the business, if you're brand new as an investor, understand that this is not normal. Like real nope. estate is not, like this, Dika, you put something on the market in three days, you got 10 bids. This is 10, 15,000. 50,000 over asking. Yeah. yeah. No. That's not the norm. This is a bubble. Those are clear signs of a bubble. How long the bubble will last? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But I, what I can tell you that it is a bubble. What is your thoughts on, um, on the current environment? What advice would you give a newbie? Mm -hmm. um, getting, looking at this and having what happened to me, because lo que me pasó a mi fue, was in 2007, was, oh my gosh, and I was in the mortgage industry. Everyone's buying, everyone's buying, there's not going to be real estate, it's going to be so expensive, I'm not going to be able to get in full crap. You yep. will be able to get in. Don't they let your us. brain lie. <laughs> <laughs> right? And overpay. So what's your advice for someone to deal with that and someone wanting to get in? What do you tell them, my dear? Hold your horses. It's not as pretty as people are talking about it. You know, the, just look at the stock market. It makes no sense, right? Every day is green, green, green. Everything's peachy. Home prices are going up like crazy. All these people are ready to buy, ready to buy. Um, we have 40 million people unemployed. We have entire mm -hmm. industries disrupted from tourism to the airline industry to, I mean, think about it. It's all across the retail retail stores, brick and mortars going out of businesses, small businesses are going out of businesses. So there's a lot that's happening right now that tells me that the plus side of things, the real estate craziness is not real. So if you're ready or you want to start preparing towards getting your first investment or your first home, get everything ready, right? So keep saving money, keep saving your money, keep improving your credit score. Keep going out, seeing different areas. Keep learning, 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 learning. Education, so that when, so when the deal comes through, because the deals will be coming, the deals are going to happen. There's going to be people that can't pay their mortgages. that are going to be foreclosing. There's going to be builders that can't sell every single apartment unit they built, or you know, in different markets. Of course, it varies by market. But my point is, just wait a little bit. Wait till things start stabilizing themselves a bit where it makes more sense to give 
200 grand for a property and make sure that you're not buying a $200,000 property when it's only worth 150, just because your mm. mind, you know, you're like, I got to get in, I got to get in. This is what happens in 07, 08. You know, we all got very, very antsy and thought that we were going to miss the boat if we didn't jump in. Um, and you're not going to miss the boat. What, what can happen is you jump in now and you can be underwater six months from now. Mm -hmm. So just protect yourself for sure. Be patient. Very wise counsel. Guys, listen to this lady. She's giving you wise <laughs> counsel. Very Thank wise you. counsel. Yes, Rose. Very wise counsel. Because I'm saying the same thing. And I'll, you know what? I'll challenge anyone. You got a bunch of, uh, bunch of uh, and, and I call them, you know, again, I'm in my 40s as well. So I see a bunch of younger guys. Yeah. Oh, no. Dude, it's a bubble. You've never lived through a bubble. You don't it's know crazy. what a bubble looks like. This is a bubble. I'm telling you because I've seen it a few times in my lifetime. Right. This is a bubble. So, you know, I'm not going to let, you can let the, um, all the noise, the outside sources, all of the yes. outside sources influence you and think that don't let your mind fool you to believe that there's not going to be any deals. The deals will, will come really wise counsel, get yourself ready, prepare yourself. What are you doing? I guess the question is for people is what are you doing now to get ready for when the opportunities come? Um, right. The same thing. I'm stashing my money. I'm saving money. I'm making sure mm -hmm. my credit's on, on point. That is not changing. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm looking at other areas. So, you know, where three months ago I was maybe looking in North Jersey. Now I'm like, okay, maybe we need to move further south and go mm -hmm. into Central Jersey or South Jersey. Like, where are those other cities and opportunity areas? Mm -hmm. So that you're, See, you're not just looking at one place. She's studying. You're studying. Oh, Yes. You're studying. You're studying. And, You're I might, studying. and I might just take a drive to PA now that we're talking. <laughs> yeah, Alec, come down here. And, you know, there's, there's, there is a lot of, uh, I, I got to tell you, I love this. I love investing here. There's a lot of opportunities. Although I am looking at Ohio, where we're buying something in OKC, where we're partnering up awesome. with, with someone. Yeah. So, you know, we're doing different things as well. But absolutely, you're welcome to come anytime. I want to talk last about mindset. I know I've been saying last, last, but this gotcha. is absolutely the last. I want to okay. talk about mindset. And then we'll wrap it up with that. Um, your mindset. So what is the ritual that you use or that you do to keep your mind positive, to keep you sharp, to keep you from having this perspective that you have? Um, definitely eliminate negativity, right? So mm -hmm. none of that, like you're not calling me to gossip. You're not mm -hmm. calling me to talk about people, to talk about drama. It's just not happening, whether that's, circle, family, you know, you gotta, you gotta step away from those things because those things do drain you and they mm -hmm. just throw you off course. Right. Um, I read a lot. So that's, mm -hmm. I think it helps because it keeps me again from learning, right. Learning mode is kind of the, the key here. Um, mm -hmm. What else? Uh, yeah. Just reading, mm -hmm. understanding that time is valuable. So I don't, I don't waste time in certain things or situations um and just understanding that there's more out there and where i came from versus kind of where i need to go and what are the things i need to do in between to get there so that's Perfect. keeps me Perfect. busy what books what's your recommendation what's your book recommendation what's your favorite business book and your person and your favorite personal development book i was looking for my bookcase uh it's upstairs now um let's see which book has so, had the most impact so or many. the most influence on you? Which one is the one that you know is like, shit, I read that one and that one really like, I have like so. really, like really did it for me. Let me, I'm going to, I'm going to pull up a really good one. Hold on. Okay. Well, in terms of entrepreneurship, because as, as I'm building the business, um, I, I'm going to have to look it up for you because okay. I, I really, I really have a lot. I pick up one whenever I feel like I need a certain refresher in that area. Whether it's business or real estate. And I know you don't know, but if you did know, which one would you say is your favorite personal development? Whatever comes to you right now. Whatever. Tony whatever Robbins, for sure. Tony which, Robbins. Uh, Waken the Giant Within? Yes. That's a good one. Okay. Even though I go back to his first few books a lot because I okay. have like the whole collection, but um, okay. that one's a great one. I think that people should start somewhere, you know, if that if you like reading or even if you don't like reading but audiobooks as well they're all in audio version so you can mm -hmm. always download the audio copy and listen to it in your car 
Um, but that would be a good place to start for sure. Yes. Fantastic. Fantastic. My dear, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. I know you're busy and um, thank you. you took the time to, to share with my audience. I'm really grateful for that. So tell us, how would people find you if they wanted to connect with you, if they wanted to get your courses? Because tell me about your courses. I know yes. that I've seen your stuff. You have, um, you have a course on doing leases. On, yeah, so on landlording pretty tell much. Me, tell, me, tell me about your courses. Yeah, so I'm doing a couple of things. Um, the one relatable, most relatable to our conversation would be the first time landlord coaching group. Okay. Uh, so that's a group that meets for five weeks, one hour per week. Um, and mm -hmm. it discusses everything that's in, in surrounds landlording, which is the okay. word that I Perfect. use. Mm -hmm. So how to find your tenant, how to list your properties, how to do a background check, how to calculate cash flow, how to find the right location, the type of loans that are available to you as a landlord, right? First time landlord, um, how to handle a bad tenant, the eviction process, um, tips on how to manage tenants. Good content. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's five hours worth, you know, bro broken down into five weeks. Um, it's very content driven. So every week we put out an agenda with the items that we're going to learn about in that specific day. Um, and then I stay open to Q and A's throughout the sessions. So if someone comes up with a question after the session's over, they can email me. Um, and I stay in const constant contact with the group itself. So it's, it, it works really well because you don't learn it all in one day. You know, you have four, four, five, well, five weeks to kind of take in all the content and communicate back and forth with me and other members of the group. So it's working very effectively um, compared to like other courses that I've had out there. Uh, so yeah, that would be the, the most relatable one. For it. Perfect. Thank yes. you so much. So where would they find you there? Where would they find you? So on Instagram, Urban Teach NYC, and then also on, I have a website, so you can go on uh, urbanteachnyc.com and you'll see the coaching groups listed, the courses. Uh, you can sign up to our newsletter, which goes out every week. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm around. Perfect. Um, maybe I'll invite you over to come and present uh, in the upcoming months at one of my real estate investors meetups. So I host a meetup every month love and it. love to invite you. So there it is formally, yes. guys, all of you listening out there that go to my group. I'm going to have Rose in the next uh, the next 12 months, probably the early next year. We'll make that happen. Yes, so definitely. And teach and, um, and spend some time with us. I'd love to have you as a guest. And uh, thank you so much for showing up, my dear. So Thank Instagram, urbanteach.com, and um, Urban Teach NYC, go. yes. And then what, Urban Teach NYC, there you go. Guys, thank you for listening. Rose, thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you, Martin. And um, thank you for sharing all of your wisdom and your knowledge and for everything that you're doing, right, in our community, the Latino community, and the urban community, and for the world, because this serves everyone. It's just Absolutely. Not, this is not just for a particular um, community or, or one way or the other it's for right. anyone that wants to learn this information can learn this information and that's a great let me tell you freaking awesome program that you're offering that a landlording first time landlord thing it's freaking amazing i love that you're doing Thank that you. <laughs> i don't know anyone else doing that out there i mean you know i haven't found yeah i haven't found any either and then, are you doing any live events are you do you have any live events coming up soon um, so I'm in the plan process of planning that, you know, with COVID happening, I just okay. was, it was a little tricky, but I think now getting into the fall, if things stay stable somewhat, I'll definitely be planning some events. So yes, those will be let posted on the website. I will let yeah. you know. Yeah, for sure. Let me know when you do have your next event, we'll have you, we'll have you up, you know, we'll have you back up and we can have you come in and, and share with the audience because I'm sure they, they like it to I'd like to meet you and learn yes. from you in person. I, I'm an in-person guy. Yeah, same here. Yeah, I miss it a lot. So definitely, yeah, it's I'm gonna a, happen. I'm an energy, I'm an energy I like to feel the energy of the crowd and, and all that good stuff, and just the, the human interaction. Guys, thank you for listening. Rose, gracias, and I'll thank see you, you soon. Thank you, Ya te sabes. Okay. Hablamos. Bye, okay. bye, guys.